Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week's Writer's Chat. And this is the place where a lot of writers like to gather, and we talk about writing by writers and for writers. So we're really looking forward to today's show, and we're so glad so many of you are with us live. And we always appreciate those of you that watch us on the replay. We get some really neat comments on the replay, so that's a, a growing number of you watch it that way. So we're really thrilled to have you guys all here with us today for today's show. My name is Jean Wise. I'm one of the co-hosts and I'm joined by my motley crew. Actually, the way I see it on my screen, I'm surrounded by these beauties. Uh, my uh, co-hosts all today are Johnny Alexander, Wade, Rebecca Doris, Wade, Rebecca, no, <laughs> Melissa Stroh, and Bethany Jack. There we go. And we are excited to talk about today's topic. It's near and dear and something we all have to learn to as writers, and that is self-editing. So before we get too far into this, uh, Rebecca, I believe you have something you want to share with us. So why don't you tell us your, what story you want to share with us today? Well, yes, ma'am. I'm so, so excited about this, um, this writer's chat because on Saturday, I finally finished my first, you know, full-length adult manuscript and so now <laughs> I know that's just the just the beginning and I'm kind of wondering what I need to do next so I'm so thrilled to have all the people here because I know all of you have a lot of experience in me and I'm just thrilled to get to ask you and listen to all y'all so that is super well congratulations let's all cheer for our, yay yay on that yeah so we're excited so we hate to break the bad news for you. You're not done yet. Oh. <laughs> and now it just starts. Now it Thanks, starts. Robin. We talked about this. We have a good, good uh, kind of a mentor that we've referred to in the past named Robert Benson. Quite a few of us saw him in Florida a couple years ago. Yeah, and you got the book on the shelf, Dancing on the Head of a Pen. And he has... It's just perfect for you, Rebecca, because he has a, a, a chapter in here about what your next step is, what you need to do. So I'm going to read this, and I believe we have somebody that's going to model part of this this morning. <laughs> All right? Yay. So he says he wears three hats. Okay. First, there's a black beret. Does someone have a beret? No. But this is my alternative. Okay, we have clothes. There you go. Oh, I like that. It's better than a beret. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when his when he is the artiste and he's writing his book. Now, if there's an artist, <laughs> if ever there was one on that. And then there is <laughs> the second sun faded, well worn, well loved New York Yankees baseball cap that he wears, which he calls his gamer. <laughs> gamer on. I, I, mine on too. I wore mine, says so Cincinnati Reds, because spring training is starting. Oh, right. there you go. <laughs> I also nice. have an alternative, not a gamer. Oh, that's cute. Right. Yes, and a gamer. <laughs> is what you put on when you edit. So we're gonna keep these hats on today, but anyway. But the third hat he calls is the brown fedora, because this is the man of action. Mm -hmm. Here comes the brown fedora. I don't have a fedora. You guys got the fedoras. They, oh, don't they look stylish. This is when we go out and, public and try to publish and give our book a place to live. So today we're putting on our gamer hats. I like this one better. Nice, Beth. Yeah, nice I like. <laughs> but we're going to go to work. I want to just read you a couple things he says here about the gamer hat, and that, then we'll kind of open it up to some real self-editing tips and stuff like that. But he says, the, the um, yeah. truth is that the time will arrive to move on to the next part of the work, the rewriting, the editing, the second draft, the third draft, the fourth draft, uh, seventh or eighth draft, which is not uncommon for many writers. When the, rewrite, when the rewrite time comes, you put your gamer hat on. The artiste 
who wore the beret, beret is banned from the premises. You are about ready to coax a book from a pile of unworthy sentences, sentences that merely hold some promise is often the best one we could say about them. You need a chest protector and a Thank set you. of shin guards. You need a wristband. You need spikes. This is where the work is. Some parts must be strengthened and moved and recast and pounded, pounded upon with such fury until you get it right. The chapters, a chapter's worth of pages must be laid out on the table and sections and paragraphs and lines are moved from one place or other. I have a list of words that I lovingly refer to as search and destroy lists. Uh -huh. I tend to use them over and over again. There are the weak verbs, the lame adjectives, the vague nouns. I go through an entire pile of pages with a fine tooth comb and a decent thesaurus. I eliminate weak words and I look for stronger ones. This is not the work for the faint of heart. <laughs> this work calls for people who don't mind if they're gamer, which is our hats, get dirty, sweat stained and faded. <laughs> this happens in the stretch often results with even more words on the floor than are on the page. This is craft, not art. This will make the book or will break the book. I spend a lot more time in my baseball cap than my beret, if that's not a lesson in it, mm -hmm. which is one reason why I keep two books going almost all the time, which I thought was an interesting thing. Uh, the rewrite work requires my Yankee cap and my butcher's apron. I can live for part of my weeks like a mash unit equipped only with pens and an exacto knife. Isn't that great? That's only part of the chapter of called dancing on the head of a pen and stuff. When he, when he presented that at the conference, it just really, really made me realize that how this is where the real work of writing is that rewriting. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to kind of do a little round table discussion, talk about some resources, some tips that we like, and we'll get Rebecca ready to put her gamer on. <laughs> and hopefully everybody else. And, and I'll just start with one thing and then I'll throw it to the rest of you guys to jump on in that I think that's one thing that has surprised me the most about writing is the amount of rewriting that it's i just thought you would write it and then maybe you have to tweak it once or twice no you know it's just like it, it is multiple multiple sometimes i read one thing the other day and it says even up to 15 different times when you think if you start i'm going to not number them i decided that i would just search it but you know that it the best writing comes out of those that we really work that craft so, yes yeah. so, i agree with you even with proposals they take so much editing for those overviews or the synopsis for, I mean, for the fiction writers, I don't know how long you guys take, you know, the redo, but even those small things, I mean, we can go nine or 10 rounds on editing just that. I mean, forget the book. And then Robert Benson says something in that book that was amazing that I've never forgotten. And he said, he knows he's done with the book when he hates the sight of it. <laughs> when we were writing Lacey's book, I was not, I couldn't get enough of it during one point. And then towards the end, that feeling came back and those words hit me and I'm like, we're almost done. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Donna had it in the chat room and I think that's a good point that a lot of this editing is left brain and it is where the, the writing, the creation of it's more the right brain. So it is bringing the left brain kind of in there, but I think there's kind of an art to it also. So I think, you know, you can look at, look at that, you know, you look at the wonderful thing like Michelangelo when he, when he, made the sculptors there they, he uh, he had a plan he kind of knew where he was going to watch what he called the angel to emerge but yet he kind of went with the flow of of that editing i don't know if that's a good illustration or not but uh on on that okay who else has some tips or a resource or a book that they want to share uh, one thing I think is really important to remember, especially in the writing process, is that you can't revise the sentence you haven't written, which I first heard Ayn Rand say. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's 
part of it. Writing is rewriting, but you've got to get that sentence down first. So don't worry about how rough things are, how bad they look. Just get it down because you can go back. And that's what it is. It's revising, rewriting, revising, rewriting over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, also, even though we're talking about self-editing and that is so important, remember that it is kind of hard to edit your own stuff sometimes. Um, for the first time, I sent out a manuscript to a professional editor because it's a story that I've been working on for a long time and just really have kind of, it's gotten so big and bulky, I wasn't really sure what to do with it. So I sent it to somebody and, and I got her revision letters to, two revision letters back. And she says, Johnny, I suggest you read self-editing for fiction writers. I have read this book like three times. So it's like, yeah. So it's like, um, I have read that book. She said, you know, you use the words only and just an awful lot. And I thought, yeah, that's probably true. And your characters smile all the time. And that <laughs> would make me laugh because I know my characters smile all the time. And if she only knew how many smiles I had already <laughs> taken out, but, you know, she sees them. So it's kind of like, you know, God gives me the eyes to see in my own work what I can so easily see in everybody else. So that's kind of my writer's prayer. That, that's good. I think yeah. interesting. Matthew made a, in the chat room, made an interesting observation that he thought it would get easier as I wrote more books. He writes, I'm on novel number three, and this is the toughest rewrite so far. I agree with that. I have, that's been my experience. I don't know if anybody else can chime in on that. And my third novel in the Misty Willow series was the hardest one for me and had the most editing that needed to be done after I submitted it. But I think, you know, there were also, my mom was died during that. I mean, so, you know, I, there's all those other things going on too. So I don't know how much that had to, why that was what made it so hard. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. On that, yeah. On yeah. That. Yeah, so it, 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 it's hard on that. We've had some good suggestions in the chat room for books, including uh, Cal Young's workshop, The Polished Draft, that's at SeriousWriter.com, so we'll do a push for that, because that, that's, that's good. What did you like best about that book that you and Bethany held up? And I think Melissa has also got a copy and is going to talk about okay. it. So one thing I wanted to talk, you know, to help Rebecca out as she's going through the, the editing process, is the chapter on proportion. And this is kind of getting deep into editing and not something you often hear people talk about at workshops or on on things, but they talk about it in this book. Um, And I think it also goes along with show and tell because you hear that all the time, show, don't tell, show, don't tell. So they start out this chapter on proportion with an example of a guy who is rescuing his friend who's been hurt and it talks about you know he pulls him over a log and he lifts him up by his belt and brings him over his shoulder and they go over another log and they go over another log and go over another log so you know he's showing right he's showing like you're supposed to but what he's really doing is bogging down the story because like mm-hmm. who cares how many logs they went over yeah. <laughs> Get, you know, get them to the other side. And they do make the point that there's a lot of action before that, those, that paragraph, a lot of action after. That paragraph can be summed up in one sentence, you know, maybe two. So it's like you do want to show, but you've got to think about proportion. And the more time you spend on something, the more readers expect that it's going to be important later in the mm. story. So that to me is a really, really good chapter. And they do say that a lot of times when writers have an issue with that, it's because they lack confidence in themselves and the way you gain confidence is just, you know, by writing and editing Mm. and, you know, reading and studying. So it's not like there's a quick fix to it necessarily, but it's something that you can be aware of and look out for. So, you know, I, I do teach in one of the classes that I do and I've taught at workshops is, you know, know when to show, but also know when to tell because sometimes it's okay to tell. Yeah. And if there's too much to show and it's not really that important, just zip through. And, and one more thing I want to say about that and I'll turn it to Melissa. I remember as a new writer and still trying to figure this out and, and show and tell and all this kind of stuff. And on a blog site, somebody put an example of showing someone 
this is how you write show. And she had this long paragraph about reaching into a laundry basket down below all, I hope no, it wasn't named Bay, I'm here to write this, all the, towels, <laughs> all the towels in the laundry and finally getting to the teddy bear at the end. And by the, you know, in the few seconds it took me to read that paragraph, I was so frustrated because it's like, really, this is what you have to do when you write? If this is an important, who cares about the, you know, just reach in and grab out the teddy bear. So it's been kind of refreshing to me to see chapters like this that talk about proportion and talking about, okay, you know what, it, it's not important, so don't spend your time on it. Just let's Good keep point. the story moving. Good point. Melissa, were you going to add something from the book? Oh, yeah. I, that's, that's awesome because really that, that's what it's about when it comes right down to the, the writing itself is achieving that balance. You know, talk about the show versus tell and the narrative mm -hmm. summary. And um, one thing that talked about in the book that I thought was excellent advice, and a lot of people don't think about doing it, is look at the page. Don't read the manuscript. Just look at your pages. Start scrolling through them and look for a white space versus wording. How much oh. you're drafting and um, words you have on a page versus white space. If there's too many words, you're going on lengthy paragraphs that are just getting really bulky. Chances are you're using too much narrative summary, but if there's too much white space, maybe there's too much showing. So then you can really look at the pages and say, okay, uh, is it going too fast? Is the pace too much? Is there too much um, showing in it? Or is it just long and boring and there's lots of rambling description? And so, yeah, look for the balance. And, and that's one, one little trick that you can use. To find that's that. good. That's good because when I'm reading a book, if I flip through it and I see a lot of, I do that as a reader, you know, so why not write like a reader? That's, that's good. Uh, good point. Good point. I like that. I like that. And then uh, I've been a couple things in the chat here. I really like what Tina said that she's grown to expect the need to rewrite and appreciate how transformative and critical the editing process is. I think transformation is such a cool word that I think that's how we ought to think about our words uh, as artists, you know, that we write this and then we're allowing it to bloom more, see the light of day more. I really, really like that. And Matthew had a really good question, and I think that's probably going to come back to you. You guys have done a little bit more, especially in novels, about the staging of edit editing. Like, what's the difference between developmental and then copywriting, wordsmithing, proofreading, all that? I don't know who wants to take that question. That's a great question. I think the premier editor here needs <laughs> to answer this one. I think so, too. I was going to give it to you, but, um, you know, some of those words are used so interchangeably and that's one reason it's a little bit difficult to, to know what's what, but basically, um, a developmental edit, sometimes you'll hear it called substantive edit is the big picture edit. So when I submit a manuscript to Ravel, like one of the mysteries, it would come back to me. And they would have, they have their own little punctuation and comma rules and stuff. And so that I don't see. They just change those, but they don't do track changes. But then she would do more of a, of a big picture thing. She would change some things, but, you know, it's mean like, you know, rewrite this or rewrite that or, you know, think about these things. And then it turns back in. And then it would come back with the line by line edit, which is sometimes called content edit, but sometimes the other one's also called the content edit, which just, you know, makes it a little bit hard. And that is where they, where she's looking at it and she would, it would be like, um, oh, sometimes I would do those, make those in mistakes. So I do better at them now um, since she caught me on a couple of them where it's like I had um, something about the, the brats and, oh gosh, now I forget. The brats and the hamburgers were on the grill and they were laughing or, or like sizzling on the grill, the brats and hamburgers. So it made it look like they were the ones laughing, you know, so you know, oh. <laughs> it, it, says, it starts out with an ing, it, it always starts out with an ing word. So it's like, you know, sizzling on the grill, mm -hmm. about the brats and, and then, you know, that made it sound like they were the ones or, you know, something like that. So that is, also mentioned actually in one of the chapters in here, one of the last chapters, so you can kind of look at it and see what it's exactly called. Um, and then the proofreading, and then I would get, so that, then we do that, and then I get galleys, and that was like the last chance to go through. 
and you're not supposed to make any big changes then. Like you're not supposed to make a lot of character changes or scene changes. It's more just like making sure everything's the way you want it. Like I said, in my third novel, I actually was making major changes to a few of the scenes because it still just hadn't come together the way I wanted. And by then there's been some distance, you know, I haven't seen it in a while. And so you're seeing things with pressure eyes. And then the proofreading, which yeah. I am not good at and do not enjoy doing and do not, not, I don't, I don't offer that as a service because I just know that you make mistakes. And if I catch them, I'll change them. But you know, proofreading, you really almost need someone who is willing to take the time to read it backwards. So yeah. they're actually looking at the words and not, yeah, not story. sentences and not the story. No, does, that, does that yeah. help? So, you know, because I'm not, you know, there's a lot going on in chat and I'm not really watching that. Um, just as far as me, when I write, I have learned that the way I do it, because um, I kind of have trouble not editing as I write. Mm -hmm. Bethany said that too. And I know you're supposed to really separate those two things. And it's really, really difficult for me to, to do that. So what I have found I end up doing is um, I, start the, I start the work. And like sometimes like I might go back like, um, like a chapter before and read it just to kind of give me a running start like I'm having trouble in starting that, that next day's writing but what I really found that happens for me is I get maybe a third or fourth third of the way into the story and, all, and I hit a wall and I just don't even know where the story's going to go mm -hmm. and I go back and I start from the beginning and I go and then I go to about the halfway point and that happens again and I go and this so this might happen three or four times so what happens by the, by the time I turn in my manuscript I have gone over that first part about maybe three or four times mm -hmm. and it is set and it is pretty solid. And the last part I've not gone over as much, but because the first part was so solid, mm -hmm. it took that story in the direction it needed to go. That is so, great. Yeah. So I don't do a lot of, like I'll read it over all together before I turn it back, turn it in. But it, it, like I don't do like 15 different steps, you know, like yeah. edit. Well, that is so encouraging. <laughs> this is exactly what I've been doing. Yeah. Um, my mom is constantly praised from her editors at publishing houses that she turns in clean manuscripts. So they don't have to do a lot. So that's, that is true. this is a good advice from an amazing <laughs> self editor. <laughs> I want to kind of out of the chat, I want to say that so we have this on the recording in case people don't see the chat. They don't always see the chat when they watch the replay. Is that several people have listed some online editing program that they've had good luck with. Autocrit, um, Grammarly, and it seems like there was a third one. Let me, uh, Pro Writing, Pro Writing Aid, that those are great resources that, you know, that, that they've had good luck with at least finding some things that they haven't seen otherwise. So that, 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 that is great. Uh, on one, that. Thing that, one thing that's helped me so much, and Melissa, I think, um, we're both members of the Jerry Jenkins Writers Guild, and he will get on and um, take a member's manuscript, first page of their manuscript, and he will edit it in front of us. And that has, that is just so helpful. Wouldn't you oh, say so? That's so fun, too. It's fun to do that. He's done that at writers' workshops that he's mm -hmm. presented too, and it's kind of scary to have your first page, but, but he's you done learn. <laughs> and, and maybe that's one of the essence we learn. I think the more we're mm -hmm. edited, the more we learn. Somebody, uh, Brandy, made the comment. She has a style sheet that she uses to keep her head straight, and I think we all know little words or things that we slip into, and we could create our own checklist. You know, and uh, we know that I know I use that. Too many that's in this sentence, you know. Mm -hmm. I I know my problems with that, you know. So that what was the one you mentioned, Bethany, that you used all the time? You said there was something um, for the resource tool. Yeah, um, or, Grammarly has helped me. Like when I submit school things, um, I use it. I have the one that does the web. It doesn't go onto my Microsoft Word document, but it has helped me catch things. <laughs> that I didn't want, you know, my instructor to see or like just mistakes and things. But um, I, when we're interesting, we're talking about editing and like getting rid of words. And then last night I read this like, really long article about um, copywriting kind of thing. So we don't need to go into that at this point, but um, he had like 
words to put in. So even mm. as a part of the editing and rewriting, I think it's changing, it's always changing the words to be better words, but actually thinking of words you need to have. That's versus good. like Because I have like a lot of eliminating words. Because then now we have to think of words we need to have in there too, so. Important words, important words. And Steph, were you going to, uh, Bethany, talk a little bit about some of the different like academic or manuals that how different style manuals things were you going to bring up something about that yes so for the grad school program that i'm in i have to use apa and i'm getting more points marked off this time for apa nonsense than ever before and it's really frustrating so editing i think we think a lot like we talk a lot about fiction in here but like for nonfiction, there's lots of different writing in there two different genres and you know, style mm -hmm. is a big thing. There's a Chicago manual of style that a lot of people use, and then MLA, and then APA is t a nightmare. <laughs> so oh, that was just one thing, like, just you have to know for whatever you're writing, what kind of style that they want it in. And isn't Chicago manual style sort of like the overarching one for publishing? Like, that's the one that you need to follow? That is, yeah. yeah. I've even had the instructors, like, in my first two classes, they would get on to me for being too conversational or not following academic style, but it's hard when you're writing conversationally and then you have to switch over into a, not like contractions, which are a big deal, they're yeses. You know, when we write blog posts, it's a no-no for, mm -hmm. you know, when you're trying to be professional. So that was like a hard self-editing thing. It's going back and looking for con all the different contractions. Oh. Then, you gotta be aware of that. When I was working for the newspaper, that was APA, and she had certain, the editor at the newspaper had certain things. She actually sent out an email once a week with a lesson, or wow. then of all things, they update. Every, you know, they'll update where, where normally they used to capitalize internet, they no longer capitalize internet. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that sort of thing, you know, little tweaks like that. So it, you always have to be aware of that. And I think kind of keep that in mind. I keep, though, it's getting a little dated, a, a little book called the Pocket Style Manual. And this is by a Diana Hacker. Let's see if I hold that up. But it's, it, what I like it is because it has both Chicago and APA and MLA little references in it. So it's a quick, easy one, you know, that at least gets me in the ballpark of whichever style manual I'm following. So that ha happens. Um, Donna suggested proofreading secrets of best-selling authors by Kathy Eide. That that be good. On that. On that. Yeah. On on that. What else? What else do you guys got? I know Johnny's got something she wants to share with us too. But do we want to hit a couple tips before we go to Johnny's screen share? Do you, anybody have one or two extra good tips to share? Um, I think mom may have mentioned it, but like, um, ing words, getting rid of the ing words, and then, um, adverbs, pretty much all adverbs. I know there's exceptions mm -hmm. for that, but that's one thing to look for. And then another thing that I do is I try to make sure that I don't have the same word being used to start sentences. And that happens a lot when I'm writing. So I'll, like, and then changing the pronouns, you know, the he and she, and then the big one, um, that I get dinged for all the time is overusing commas and then, um, using the words it and this. So like my mom edits my stuff and she's always like, what is the it? What is the this? And I told her last <laughs> night, now I'm making my kids do it when they talk to me without thinking. I'm like, what's the it? What's the this? <laughs> I'm making them like actually say what it is. So that has helped in nonfiction make it stronger if you're not using passive words like it, this, that. How do you do that without making it repetitive, Bethany? Um, I'll change the sentence structure a little mm -hmm. bit, sort of just move things around. And that's one thing too we found when we're going through some um, – some of the stories that we, you know, my mom's helped me edit is sometimes looking at the paragraph, just moving like a sentence from the bottom of the paragraph to the top of the paragraph changes mm -hmm. everything. And now it's like a perfect uh -huh. paragraph. So even yeah. reordering sentences. It makes a difference. Right a reordering <laughs> this, the sentence end up, you know, have the strongest word at the beginning or the strongest word at the end, you know, huh. depending on the, sometimes gives a rhythm. Writers right. use the word, and I, I guess I've noticed this, and I, I, well, also, Jeannie does this, too, and I've dinged her on it, too, it's not just Bethany, using it, and it's like, okay, what do you, you know, we just kind of say it, but it's like, what, what do you really talk, when you say it, what do you really mean, and do you even really no. know <laughs> what you mean, you know, or you just sort of, because you're, because you're typing, you know, maybe you're typing fast, and you're just kind of thinking it through, and it just, 
that makes sense that, you know, a different set of eyes. It's like, okay, what in your writing will be stronger. It really will. If you have, if you have to find a different word for that, it, or change that sentence around, mm. you're going to have more specificity and it's going to make your, it's going to make it stronger. And the other thing I, um, I really watch out for is beginning sentences with it is, there was anything like that, because usually you can just chop those two words off and go from there. Yeah. Brandy's just mentioned this book. So I'm yes. good, good basic yes. book on that. I'm fascinated, Bethany, that you overuse commas. It sounds like Matthew has trouble with commas, and I underuse commas. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, What's the rules on commas? commas? I just go crazy over that. I don't know. The rules I'm a fan of the Oxford comma. Well, well, yeah, we can get on the whole Oxford thing. But the rule, like Chicago <laughs> Manual style has like certain things, and then I think there are journalistic rules that are different. Yeah. And really, publishing houses they know. So what I would say is, don't get hung up on commas. Be consistent in how you use them. If you're going to use the Oxford comma, always use the Oxford comma because your publishing house will change. And if you're self-publishing, know what you're going to do. Have it as part of your style guidelines and be consistent. consistent. Yeah. We have a lot of votes. People like Mr. Oxford. <laughs> I love, the, and, I love and, Oxford. And, and everybody likes Oxford. <laughs> there was a major lawsuit last year over something because they didn't use the Oxford. So we're yeah. all, all voting for all pro-Oxford here, <laughs> uh, uh, it seems like, you know, uh, on that. It, so anyway, that, that's kind of funny. I don't know, before we go to Johnny's, anything else, Melissa, or got a tip? on tip did you guys have a tip sheet from jerry jenkins was there something on there that you could share yeah. i had it on my computer my computer's not did you have it melissa i emailed it it might be oh, on oh yeah you did oh, good wow. job wow. Yay. wow is there a tip that might jump out on you that you could share real quick before we go to johnny melissa oh well the first tip that he always hammers and hammers into everybody is to tighten and omit needless words mm -hmm. so, um, or in resist the urge to explain, which has gone over in um, the editing for fiction writers as well. Mm -hmm. You know, all through, as they call it, are you resist the urge to explain? Don't use a lot of stage direction. Is, is uh, the deal. when you're when you're writing, think tight. And that, like the logs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a good point, and just even the process of it. I know uh, Richard Benson commented in the workshop that he literally takes pages and uh tapes them to his wall so he's proofreading vertically you know reading his stuff i gotta pull this in can't see it right vertically instead of horizontally or on the computer because it changes your perspective and things wow. jump out it's like reading your stuff out loud you hear it different so then you also you see it different and uh, Vicki says she has to print it out to edit well, and I agree with you completely. I, I know I use a lot of paper or I'll use the backside of other papers, yep. you know, to, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. I need to print it out to edit well, too. I think that is exactly right, Vicki, on, on that way. Mm -hmm. But I just, or, or somebody said, have your, Brandy said, to have your computer read it to you. That That's is a, a good thing. Yeah. Oh, that is a great idea. Uh, on, on, on that but I never thought about putting them up on a wall like that till till he commented on, on that so that, that is interesting and stuff Johnny you got some yes. stuff you were going to screen share I do. let me try it let me see about how I can do this okay so this is you don't want that um I think this is I was going to show okay this is the very first draft, the original opening of the third book in my Misty Willow series, and then the changes using track changes that show the final edition. And actually, I think this are changes that I made, not that the editor made if I went back through it, because um, they don't really make a lot of, they don't change words very often. They ask me to if they think it's not clear. Um, so here, it, you know, it just kind of starts out. Now, my opening scenes, I usually can write them pretty clean the first time because they've been in my head for a while before I've actually sat down to write and I know what I want to say. 
But here it's just like changing good old fashioned hard work to honest sweat. So you've got two words instead of five and it's more mm -hmm. descriptive and maybe not so much a cliche. And then this was this, this paragraph where you see all this, I had originally wrote, written just day spent detasseling corn, filling the silent and cutting hay, riding horseback through the fields and along country lanes, dozing, da da da. And took this as a first page thing to my American Christian Fiction Writers Memphis chapter. And a couple people said, you know, that just seems like like a list, which which it is, yeah. right? It is a list. And so based on that feedback. I rewrote it, so it kind of still gives the idea of what's going on, but it's not just the staccato list. And let me see. So and then again, mm -hmm. not that it would do the same prayer he wanted to pray now. Not that it would do any good. Praying wouldn't erase. It's so much better that none of that explained, which mm -hmm. is also these silly words, you know. Praying when he raises much stronger than yeah. than that. So do yeah, you, I don't. Do you always do it in red and underline like that? And then you have to when you're sending it back to the editor. So then when you're like sending that. it back, okay. Yeah. But you could do that for yourself too if you wanted to keep that. Copy. You wanted to, but no. So I did this. I mean, I took the original theme, which I still had, and then I had my book open and I did this to show you guys. So this isn't anything you know really anybody saw. Um, cause I had changed some of this before I sent it in the first time. So then again, okay. So this was an important part. Um, his uncle is dead and you really don't know that yet. So you're just learning this. Um, so if only Rusty were still alive and then it, da, 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 da. But then we change it to, it might still be a thriving business mm -hmm. if Rusty were still alive, except then he'd know how low Gabe had fallen, dot, dot, dot. So we took out, except then he'd know what Gabe had done, and that knowledge would have killed him. Now, this was an editorial change. She worked with me on, on changing that. So anyway, um, I can put this in the, in the Facebook group, so if anyone really wants to study it, we don't have to you know, do it all here. You can really look at it, see how we even changed where this does go on. This is not like the end of the scene, but, but it actually, it just kind of does, you know, end it in a way but then he goes on with more conversation and then the other one i had okay how do i how do i stop do i have to stop this share yeah this share? should be stop this share there you yeah. go and then you have to go back in and do the other one and, and on that do you keep the, your stuff that you delete there's been some talk in the chat about keeping I, well i do because i start a new file every day so like when i'm writing like this was called Misty Willow Three because it didn't have a title yet. So my my practice, and it's been like this for years and years, even before I got published. I title it so it's like whatever Misty Willow Three, 2015-08-12. So that means on August 12, 2015, this was it. And the next day, I open that up and I save as and give it that date, so that I always have the previous day's work if for one thing if anybody would ever say i plagiarized no yeah. you can see the progression of this book this story and you know you just never know when you might want to go back and where something that you thought you know and sometimes i do say about scenes and i just and i have different files saying this scene because i deleted it but maybe i want to bring it back i don't know yet so I find this encouraging to see how much you have reworked your words. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, then, and I think that really just helps a great deal in uh, to know that this is part of the process. This will happen. Really. So this is from a galley. And, and again, these are usually you would not be making this, these major changes on a galley. I think they kind of gave me a, a break because again, just the circumstances and all that. Because usually you're just writing on the on the copy, like they have sent you a printed copy of what it's going to look like, and you're just writing on that, you know, and you're saying, you know, like changing maybe cup to mug or whatever you're doing, you know. But they really just want the changes that have to be made, any typos, that kind of thing. But so I have read I've read this book, you know, who knows how many times I've had two editors look at it, and I get to page 172 and realize that Gabe says. These must be the first, and if you look down 
where it's red, they were the first, she said softly. So it's like, Amy pretty much repeats what Gabe says. <laughs> that, you know, so like, even though we're at this stage, it's like, no, they can't be saying the very same thing. And so what I did in this and is we keep, keep what Gabe says, but we take out, he originally says, Jeb, Jeb Laster and Eliza Wyatt. And I give that line to Amy mm -hmm. and put a little bit in there. And then I move what Bethany was talking about. I moved who Jeb is and all of that up to right under that. And I just think it gives it more of an emotional heft then when we, because this is an emotional scene. This is when they're kind of together. They're, you know, they're not sure about each other. That's a romance, you know, that whole thing. And this, so then you have Amy doing this and this, if you've read all the books, all this makes really sense, a lot of emotional sense. And then you just have Gabe saying, oh, I'm a little jealous of old Jeb. And then, <laughs> you know, the story goes on. But it's what's, better, what's, the, what's the significance of the green and the red color? It's one, one person, one's... Uh, no. Okay. Track changes just does this. I think it's okay. copy and paste. Like, okay. these are not deleted, but when I actually copied it, and deleted it and cut it and pasted it, it stays, it turns green. Got it. You never know what track changes it's going to do. <laughs> so I hope this is helpful. And, you know, there, there are several examples of when I was doing this. I mean, this is a couple, this is five pages, three pages long, five pages long, however many pages long. I mean, there are a lot of changes I was making, but this is the one I wanted to show you because it's pretty straightforward. And Seth, wow. Here we go. Yeah. That's great. That is great. There you go. Thank you, Johnny, for sharing that. That is that was fun. You that was really, really good. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> cool. Bethany, I know you've been published quite a bit too. Do you have any comments to add but when you've had galleys back or changes? Probably my favorite edits from an editor were the very first ones when he was talking about this. I think I've said this one right shut before, you know more about style and tone with voice. You know, this sounds great from the stage. It doesn't read well. And so mm -hmm. making sure when I'm going through and making it very, because I write nonfiction is making it very conversational. And sometimes I'll even read paragraphs out loud. And if it does sound really great from the stage, I will try to soften it. Or I use a lot of um, asides, I guess, in my writing, like where you would italicize or mm -hmm. talk to the reader. like. Um, What's it in, it's, it's called like the, it's when you go like in the office, they're talking to each other, but then they look at the camera. It's like, there's a word for that kind of method. It's like when you're looking off screen or you, you break a wall, the third wall or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's when you actually look at the cameras. That's breaking the, breaking the wall. It's when breaking you look the at the camera. Yeah. So I kind of like try to do it with my readers too. Like here's the book. And then sometimes do an aside when it, like I'll use that to sometimes get through like a tricky editing part if I can't get it to work right sometimes I'll use that as like a a method but um, that was like a big editing thing and uh, commas are the big one for me <laughs> um usually it's not content usually it's the small things like you know um, likes and ings and adverbs that's yeah. what I would love to know more of it Bethany because that's yeah. what I've done I've got done a nonfiction and it's it started out as a spoken batch of lessons so i'd love to hear more of that yeah sometime jan uh jan wanted to know johnny do you save all those do you save all those files all your daily files once your project's done i do i put them in a um like i have a folder you know with that like misty willow series book three and then i have like a draft folder in it so like after if it's if the drafts are kind of cluttering up the main folder i just yeah. shoot all the previous ones to a draft so yeah i mean you can see there are days when i forget to do the save thing but you know you can you can pretty much see um how many days i've actually worked on <laughs> <laughs> worked on a novel because you can can kind of see and and actually um i was looking for the first book and i know that i used to write it with the gal having another name and my first files in it did not have her with another name so i think those are on a different computer but yeah yeah i do i mean i there i i keep them i do want to clarify the whole ink thing because i was 
thinking about that as we were going through this, okay, there, there, I was actually talking about two things and trying to make them one. So it was like, um, it was something like as the brats and burgers were sizzling on the grill, they laughed and giggled. Okay. That makes it sound like it was, it was what was on the grill was laughing and giggling. So you need to change the sentence. So you don't do that. The other one, the ing thing is a simultaneous action thing. So what it is, is like saying, um, stopping the car, she reached down and picked up the pebbles from the driveway. Okay, she could not do those two things simultaneously unless she's a, some kind of a contortionist. So you, know, you just have to change it to after stopping the car, she picked up the pebbles from the thing. I mean, that's an easy fix. That's not always the way I fix those. But um, I was really, I thought I was really good at that, at both those things and didn't have any, but I had like five on my first book. <laughs> And like three in my second, I don't think I had any in my third because by then I really was looking out for them. So again, it's kind of like, we, I don't know if we've actually said this, but being edited and being critiqued and being a critiquer, great, great education. It's a yeah. great way to learn how to do, be do better with your own work. Because if you know, if someone tells you something a couple times, then you, it becomes a game. It's like, you know, I'm not going to have any of these for Kristen to find. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> a little, a little yeah. ego in there, huh? Absolutely. Absolutely. Johnny, Jesse wants to know if you have one file per chapter or how do you do it? Or do you, could you have multiple mm -hmm. chapters in one file? Yeah, I mean, it starts from chat, whatever I'm working on starts from chapter one and goes all the way down. I just go to So, multiple chapters. Yeah. So, they're all in the same, same chapter. And then, um, and then of course it's it's the the final the final things all together. No, it just builds on one another. And then I do the revision chapters. Like when I start over, I like like that third waypoint or whatever. I start over. I bring over maybe just one chapter at a time, or even okay. a scene at a time, and go through it. I don't, you know, then so I kind of do start over. But um, but yeah, I usually just keep adding to that same document. Rename it the next day. Add to that same doc. Add to that document. It's important to keep that renaming straight. Mm -hmm. I like it that you said dates that you put. The I date. use dates. Yeah. And Andy Andrew Manson uses numbers. He goes like, you know, like title one, title two, title three. But but I use the dates, and it kind of is helpful. Like when I went back to this, went, oh wow, you know, I started that novel in August, and I wrote most of it in March. So. <laughs> Go. That's interesting. Yeah. There's been a lot in the chat about Scrivener, you know, a lot, especially novelists, a lot of people mm -hmm. use Scrivener. And, you know, I think if you get used to it, using it, it's been a, it's been a great tool for a lot of people. It looks like Matthew used it. Someone else, I think, referred to it, that used to, used to it on that. So that, that is, that's great. On it's that, amazing. You know, on that way. We're starting getting towards the end of time. I don't know. Do you have last minute tips before we invite people to come on? To share anything that they've learned. Nancy says she's a Scrivener dropout. Me too. <laughs> like, me too. I've yeah. got it. Yeah, Read this book. That's what I would say, if you're, especially if you're writing fiction. But I think it actually has a lot of good ideas for nonfiction too, because nonfiction writers are writing stories as anecdotes and as okay. examples and that kind of thing. So yeah, read it. Yeah. My tip would be to create that list of words that mm -hmm. you know are your trouble words, you know, and a couple, I have a little thing called my self-editing checklist and it's like, uh, you know, it's just little guidelines that, that I follow it for me, you know, it's words that I have trouble with on, on that, you know, and, and we haven't, you know, we've talked about, we didn't get into active voice and passive voice too much. That's one too, yeah. you know, the biggie. That's a big biggie. And the strong, the right word, you know, find that right word. Sometimes you got to go digging for that bowl yeah. on that. Bethany, last minute tip. My last minute tip is to do some research into how words can affect your brain. They can change your brain. There's research out there on that. Like um, it can like prompt different activity in different areas. So like even in your copywriting or your headlines using emotion words and then there's powerful words that you should put in copy. So even when you're doing your first draft in writing, go back, make a list and find the list of the words that hit people's emotions and like trigger points and then go back in and then 
Chaos, the word that, that sounds like a topic for writers chat. Yeah, it does. <laughs> power yes. words, power words. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll have to follow up with that. that. Melissa or Rebecca, do you have anything that you would like to add? Um, well, I, uh, when I'm doing um, edits, we talked about different stages of edits. And in fiction writing, there's um, different things you're looking for, too, apart from having that list of, you know, self-editing type things. I also have a list for diagnosing character flaws and a list for incorporating rhythm in your story and um, utilizing your setting so you can set up the emotion in your story as well as, you know, progressing the story, the plot, the characters, making sure they all mesh. And so um, I do that at different phases of editing too. And I, I really highly recommend um, looking into those things too. Wow. And they're addressed in a lot of those books we've talked about. So I'm Rebecca, really, go ahead, Rebecca. Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm just really excited about next week because it, it's kind of going to spill over into that when Rhonda's here <laughs> and she's going to be telling us about Word. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Do you I'm want so to tell us about, about next week, you guys, uh, Johnny and, or Rebecca? Well, uh, yeah, Rebecca just did a great job. Rhonda Dragomir, who's going to, who is here mm -hmm. today, is going to be our guest next week. And, you know, we may think that we know Word, but guess what? <laughs> Rhonda's going to... Tell us what we might not know about words. So, yeah, I hope y'all come back to that. Yeah, that'll yeah. be great. I'm really looking forward to that. That'll be great. Why don't you guys come on in? You can unmute and get yourself back on video. A couple of you guys, if you can't get in, put it in the chat that you can't get in, and we'll kind of sometimes we have to release you. <laughs> it's crazy, <laughs> but. I don't know why it does that, <laughs> that in that way. Uh, Nancy, Rhonda, I mean, Nancy Rhonda, says we need a, Rhonda said we need a Western hat for next week. <laughs> Yay! Sounds good. Donna, really? Let me find Donna here. We'll do that. Really there you go. <laughs> and Rhonda, I'm finding you guys. I'm releasing you. Just tell me if you can't. We'll release you here. We'll, we'll release you out of that. Uh, uh, in prison over there, there in the chat room in prison. There we are. There you go. I'll just say that um, next week you need your Western hat because I'm going to talk about Microsoft Word being like a bucking bronco. Model <laughs> <laughs> tame it. And uh, sometimes, even when you think it's tamed, it's going to see a rattlesnake and head for the hills. And uh, <laughs> You have to learn a few little tricks in Word to tame it down. But um, the theme of my chat is going to be, um, you know, every every cowboy needs a well-trained horse. <laughs> I love it. My love Microsoft it. Word is that horse. Yeah. And if you don't have a good horse, good luck wrangling any words. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> so I've, I've learned Microsoft Word by uh, just by necessity and by driving myself nuts looking on Google how to fix whatever problem huh. I had developed. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you how to, how to wrangle that monster <laughs> and uh, give you a few little tricks that should help save you time. Oh, that's gonna be great. Look at Terry. <laughs> What's going on, Terry? <laughs> I, I love it, Terry. <laughs> That is a fan. I tell you, that is a right I fan. I, <laughs> I am impressed. Did everybody get released that wanted to be released? Did I? Did we miss anybody? <laughs> I like that Norma was singing to us in the chat room. Norma, that's cute. You're up here now, aren't you? Was Norma in? Yes, she was. Oh, there she is. There he is. See, I, we want to hear you. Vicky's our singer, so. <laughs> Let me Let me go. Okay, anybody is we got That's the we, one. Yeah, and did I get the right song? Yeah. <laughs> anybody here want to throw in an extra tip or something they learned today or something they were surprised? Want to share something? That time? Oh, we're quiet now. I think I, I was going to say I think I'm going to have to go and get that book on self-editing. You mm -hmm. sold it very very well. It's yeah. a classic, yeah. Um, I find that reading books about writing really improves my writing. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm a visual learner, so what I read um, stays with me. What I hear may come and go. Yeah. So true. Anything else? Anybody else wants to add? One thing that's helped me is 
um, entering contests, which is really scary for a beginner like me, but you get professionals looking at your first chapter yeah. and they tear it apart and they make you feel really horrible. And then after two <laughs> months, you get back at it and you say, okay, I'm going to try to do this one thing they did. And you can, mm -hmm. you mean it's, 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 it's all a new world for me. So, yeah. um, but the contests have been helpful. Yeah. Good. That's a great idea. A great job. It is. And too, it's like, you know, you know, it's nice that the editors say, you know, you give in clean copy, but you know, I get those back and there is stuff all over it. So I, you know, my thing was, if this is clean, <laughs> what, what would an unclean manuscript look like? <laughs> but, but so, you know, even then you're, you're, you're just going to get, um, a lot of comments, but they're there to help you. They are there to make you a better writer, not to, not to hurt your feelings. Yeah. And speaking of contests, Bethany, do you want to promote, you've got a contest series writers helping to promote a contest right now, aren't they? Yeah. At right to publish? I'm going to pull our contest director in. Oh, on that's here. Vicky. Vicky. Um, Vicky. <laughs> we actually have three sets of contests open oh. currently. <laughs> um, you've got the right to publish that we're sponsoring. Um, which is uh, May 1st is that deadline uh, for that June conference. Then um, we've got the North Carolina Writers Conference has their sets of contests. And then Ohio will also have their set of contests. So they're all, <laughs> they're all open and ready for submissions. Do you, have to attend those? Do you have to attend them in order to nope. submit? Okay. No. Not have to attend. No. I'm throwing the links in the chat right now. Good, good on that. That sounds great. Hey, it's I'm going to wrap up the videotape. I mean, the videotape. Wait, is that age? <laughs> <or not>? the, <laughs> the recording. I uh, got to wrap up the recording right now. And so then we could go to the after party. So stay on yeah. if you want to stay on for a few minutes here, everybody. And we just want to thank you for being with us today and, and uh, sharing with us. And uh, for, first again, congratulations, Rebecca, for getting that yeah. first draft done. <laughs> and we appreciated all the tips. And Johnny, we really appreciate you sharing the screen share. Thank you. Because that really helps us see that. And I think it's got us to look at, and, and you know, I'm going to just, quick response to what Sophia said at, at the end there. I don't think the editors mean to make us feel bad. That it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a form of helping us so we can put on our gamers <laughs> our hats and become better writers in that in our writing craft. So join us next week. We look forward to Rhonda and the word, uh, <laughs> how to do the word better on that. So we're looking forward to, to that way too. So goodbye everybody and we'll see you next week. Bye.